Hello friends, how's it going? Mm, long time to see, I'm getting my tripod. Hold, hold, hold. I'm gonna put this camera down so I can say hi. Since we're starting a new vlog. Hi, how's it going? Um, that's not your intro. Hey everybody, I'm G. If you don't know me, I hope you're here to learn more about me. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, first of all. And welcome to our little community, community that we're building here. First, before I get into this video, I just wanted to touch on something because I've been editing a lot lately, and that is that I'm sorry if these vlogs aren't as fun as my other ones used to be. It's just that I'm barely getting back, you can tell, barely getting back into my routine here at home and being able to even do normal things so I'm not normally a lot I can't like go to soul cycle like I normally would or berries or go hang out with my friends and getting into the routine of things really has just meant being in this house so if that's boring I apologize things will start to get better and pick back up towards the end of the summer as we get closer to the times that I'm actually allowed to do things so I hope you enjoy. I hope that chit chatting with me is fun enough for you. I'm trying to do two videos a week so that you're getting some informational content for me and not just me at home like unboxing things and talking at you. But I always feel weird when other YouTubers do this because I'm like, I don't care. I could sit here and watch you talk for forever and it wouldn't bother me. So partially I do feel sorry, but then also on the other hand, I'm like, I don't feel sorry because whenever my YouTubers do it, I don't care. I just like spending time with them. So it doesn't really matter to me. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the video. I have a dry bar appointment later that we're going to since I told you guys that I can't blow dry my own hair for about a month. And I enjoy my time at the dry bar. It like gets me out of the house and just kind of distracts me from everything that's going on. So I love you and let's get into the vlog. Hello cutie besties, how are we doing? Oh, I forgot why I moved the steering wheel so you guys can see me. We're going for our weekly blowout at the dry bar since we still can't wash our own hair. It's just, I think I'm supposed to wait a month and a month will be next week and then next week I'm getting my hair done so that will count as my blowout for the week. Brain, where is it? Oh yeah, so we're going to dry bar because it's time to have our hair washed. I, it's like, it's so funny because I get so antsy and I'm like, I can't handle the oil anymore. And I'm sure that people like at these places and I always preface like, I've kept going back to the same person now, but I preface, I'm like, I'm really sorry. And she's like, it's fine. I know your situation. You really can't control it. Funny enough, she was like, don't use dry shampoo. Just like come to see me when it starts to bother you. And I was like, okay. So I can go like seven, I can go anywhere from seven to nine days and then the oil starts to bother me. Honestly, my hair doesn't really get oily until day like five or and sometimes if it's a good week six but if i'm working out it's usually day five nt way okay so we're on our way and i'll update you guys when we get there hopefully they have a good week. hi besties i'm home i just figured i would show you i what do i ask for i literally just said uh i want a classic blowout i kind of told her the situation i was like i had surgery recently and i can't you know do my own hair so she was like oh okay so you just want like a blowout to kind of be able to maintain yourself at home over the weekend i was like yes queen that is exactly what i need so this is what we went with classic just blow out my hair is looking dark i saw i don't think janie watches my vlogs but i saw a picture of janie's hair on her be real Oh my God, see, now my eyes look really green. What is happening? It's like what I decided, okay. So I saw pictures of Janie's hair on her B-reel and I was like, and she has like touches of like golden highlights throughout her head now. And she used to be like me, like dark hair. And I was like, mm -hmm. it's playing with my mind. If anything, I think I just want to do like the, the face framing pieces of like lighter hair for the summer. But I'm also like, do you see this, this hair? Do you see how short it is? Like that's from breakage from it being blonde. Like it's not like I asked for, those to be cut like that. Those are growing back from like like years of bleaching. But it just looks so good on her. And like for the summer, I was like, mm, maybe I do want to do that. Like just around the face, you know? I don't know. It just looks really cute. And I kind of want to give it a shot just for the summer. And then I'll go back to my dark hair in the fall. And not back to it, but like, you know, gloss it really like dark or whatever in the fall. It's just messing with me because I had light hair for so long. And I look at myself in the mirror and I love my dark hair, but I'm like, where where's lightness i miss it a little bit but I'm, i don't think i want to go back like full blonde the way i used to be because i was like anywhere from like a really light-headed brunette to like a blonde like a dark blonde 
and that was first of all a lot of upkeep and second of all actually it really wasn't that much upkeep it was just the fact that like my hair like my roots compared to the like the blonde that i used to have it was a very very like steep contrast and it got to the point where like if i wasn't going in to like get these redone all the time it just looked like somebody who was trying to avoid her natural hair color do you know what i'm talking about and that really bothers me because i love my hair and i want it to look like solid and gorge anyway that's that on that. Oh my God, I was gonna show you guys. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. I think I showed you guys that I got a, like a record player. I think I did tell you guys that. I had one like forever ago in college that my friend's grandpa gave me, funny enough. My friend Phoebe's grandpa gave me from like the 70s or something, he didn't want it anymore. And I was like, I will take it. And it was vintage, it was gorge. But then when I moved from college, we lost it. So I don't know where it went. So I ended up getting a new record player and we lost all the vinyls that i'd had in college which was really sad for me because i actually loved that collection and it was like super cute but anyway look what came in the mail i just want to show you guys taylor swift speak now <laughs> taylor's version look at the back of it look how cute it is um speak now was my or was my is my favorite taylor swift album and a very 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 close second is 1989 but i go through like moods sometimes i'm like obsessed obsessed with reputation and I can't get enough of it. Ultimately, Speak Now is the album I love most. I think it just really speaks to who I am as a person and it just really embodies like my energy. I'm very chaotic, if you know me. And yeah, this album just really speaks to me and it just like screams Sagittarius. Taylor Swift is a Sagittarius and so am I and it just like screams that. Anyway, I'll show you guys. So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's just Taylor sitting like laying in a bed of, I assume like, lavender flowers or like purple lilies or something it's the one she posted on her story and then she has a little prologue i'm not going to read that because it's like really long but it's gorge it's basically just about how like it's about this album and like the process of writing it when she was 20 and how it just means so much to her because it really created the foundation of like who she is too like rebelling against things in her own way and doing it through music but anyway i'll show you the vinyls this is the first one i love that photo of her i think it's like stunning like i just think it's so beautiful and i love her long hair i really do i hope she doesn't cut it whenever she does the re-recordings of 1989 i really really hope she doesn't because i don't think she has short hair in like on the album art art cover whatever it's called i don't think she has short hair on that album like on the photos but anyway this is the first picture it looks gorge and the songs that are on it are mine back to december dear john the story of us sparks fly speak now mean never grow up I wish she still put secret messages in her lyrics. I wish she still did that and like didn't say anything to anybody and just like put them in there. Cause I used to like be obsessed with that. Like I would run to the store, buy the album and like decode it on purpose. So this is what it looks like. It's, I got the, what's it? The purple vinyl or the like violet? Yeah, violet marbled vinyl. Can you tell? I don't even think you could tell on here that it's like marbled, but it is and it's so beautiful. And then the other side too, you can kind of see it a little bit more on this side. Anyway. That's what it looks like. I'll play it later while I'm making dinner. It's just beautiful. I really love vinyls because I feel like they're a work of art in and of themselves. And if you don't know why people buy vinyls, like why, I'm sure some of you are like, why do you buy vinyls? You can just stream it on Spotify if you have Spotify. But vinyls are actually, well, way back in the day, I think it's a little different now because a lot of things are produced like online or like on a computer. But I actually think, no, I think they still do it the same way. So records used to be like, they would literally be recording the person, like the artist who was recording the song in the studio. So you, the version you're getting on these vinyls is like the raw, raw version of them singing it in studio. So it's like their actual voice. It's not edited. It's not, does that make sense? Like that's what it used to be back in the day. So like that's why vinyls used to be so expensive because it was the actual voice of the person singing it. So you got like the full emotion and you got the full like experience of that person's voice. And my dad has a bunch of vinyls of like the Beatles. Those Beatles are my dad's like favorite, favorite artists of all time. And so he has some of them from like their first drop. And when you listen to those songs, also the little scratchies in it are so beautiful. You can hear like my dad loves John Lennon you can hear like their real voices. And sometimes you'll hear like things that they messed up in the recordings and you, it's not like a, like a CD or a tape or a cassette. You can't, 
fix it. Like it's already been burned onto this vinyl, so you can't fix it. So that's kind of the beauty of it, if that makes sense. Okay, this is the second one. It's just like the full photo of her laying in that field of like purple flowers and her Birkenstocks, LOL. And then on this one, you get Enchanted, Innocent, Last Kiss, Hours, Better Than Revenge, Haunted, Long Live, and Superman. This is what it looks like. It's the same thing. It's also marbled, but it's the exact same thing with that picture. And then the other side has the others. And then this is the last one. It comes in three. I love this photo. This one is the most reminiscent, I feel like, of the old album. It reminds me a lot of the album cover from the first one. I'm shocked she didn't go with this one because it's so similar. Anyway, on this one you get all the vault tracks. Electric Touch, I Can See You, Foolish One, Timeless, When Emma Falls in Love and Castle's Crumbling. And it's just so beautiful because it says on there that like everything was done by Taylor. She was the executive producer. She did all the packaging and creative art design on all of these. She did it all. It was her. And then also the package, because I, I don't know if it's because I pre-ordered, it came with purple like confetti hearts all over it and it was just giving long live. Like, you know that lyric that's like, stand still in this moment or something, like confetti falling all to the ground? Like that, that's what it made me think of. Anyway, that's the vinyls, so beautiful. The thing at the very bottom of this little message that I'll read to you that is, I think, so beautiful, you kind of get an insight to Taylor's brain. And she said, I always looked at this album as my album and the lump in my throat expands to quivering voices. I say this, thank you to you, dear reader. It finally is. Where is it? There's something really, oh, okay. So she, there's a little message that says, I'll forever be proud of setting a goal and seeing it through. So like re-recording. I'll always feel shivers all over when I remember singing Long Live to close the show every night on tour. It was unfiltered and pot uh, potent like this album. In my mind, the saddest song I've ever written is Last Kiss. That's so sad. And my most scathing is Dear John. Makes total sense. And my most wistfully romantic is Enchanted. So if anything, that just kind of incites you into all the songs she's ever written, what, how she feels about them. The fact that she thinks that Last Kiss is like the, the saddest song she's ever written, I can see that. And it's so funny because that song's about Joe Jonas, but we all love him now. We don't hate him as one of her exes, even though I have love for Joe Jonas separate as the Jonas Brothers. <sighs> Dear John, would I consider that the most scathing? I don't know. Look What You Made Me Do is pretty like in your face, which I loved. But maybe Dear John was most romantic, enchanted. Okay, okay. I can see it. That it's funny because when I listen to Enchanted now, it reminds me. I was talking to Alex about this. It reminds me of like what it felt like to fall in love at like 15. And honestly, that girl's like still in there. And it, honestly, it still feels that way. You like, you're like, you have a crush on somebody, and you're like, I really hope you don't like anybody else. I hope it's just me. You know. Anyway, just wanted to share. Speak now with you guys. I've just been talking for 10 minutes. Okay, bye. Hi, vlog. It's Friday afternoon, I think. Um, but no, it is Friday afternoon. I just don't remember the last time I checked in with you. I'm currently filming some TikToks as I get ready to go to dinner with Mal Gal. We're gonna go get some pizza. So my mom says pizza, so I think it's really funny. Actually, when we were kids, she used to say it like that, and I thought it was really funny. My brothers and I used to make so much fun of her for that. I don't know. Anyway, okay. I'm doing a bunch of get ready with me, Listen to, listening to The Summer I Turned Pretty, season two soundtrack because I like to inflict pain on myself. I would just like to say that, oh, I would just like to say that my hair, it feels like it's not growing. Like it feels like it's just at a standstill at this length and I want it to be like two and a half inches longer. I mean like my mom said that this is like a good adult length, like I don't need to keep growing it out. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like a haircut that makes you look like a 20 year old, not a 17 year old playing on the volleyball court, you know? Like I used to be. Anyway, okay. I'm gonna get ready. as much as normal clothes as I can. I'm gonna be living in these linen shirts for the rest of the summer because uh, I have to wear like a sports bra at all times. 
So I'm wearing this white linen top from Zara. I kind of want to level up because now I have like five or six linen tops, but I want to level up to like a good linen top. Anyway, and then I have these shorts. I think they're also actually from Zara. They're just like cutoffs. They're not cutoffs, but just like little normal shorts. That's it. And then I put my hair in a pony and these little gold hoop earrings that my mom gave me. And then just normal jewelry. That's really it. I'm not actually, I am going to put on my rings for the first time in like 10,000 years. So I'm ready. I need to put on perfume. Oh, this apartment gets so hot, you guys. Like, I think it's just because it's so hot outside. And so, like, because so many units are running on, like, you know, the air conditioning units, it can only get so cool. But it just gets so hot inside. And then I, like, want to die. I wish I could jump in a pool, but can't do that this summer. Ha ha. Because of my incisions. So, I can actually get in the pool in, like, mid-August. That's when I'm, like, allowed. <sighs> Which makes me sad, but it'll be fine. I've wanted to do this for so long. The jockey, so I've heard like on TikTok that the jockey sports bra is like a fan favorite among like reduction patients. I hate this thing, I hate it. And every other sports bra, like a large is too big for me and now I have to switch to mediums. For whatever reason, the jockeys, it doesn't sit right. It like digs in and then like it's too small in certain areas and then overall like the sizing is just off. So I guess the moral of the story is, is if you buy jockeys, go up a size maybe two i don't like how it i don't like the material it's really not that structured and it does zip in the front but it's not like the other bras that i have the other ones they kind of almost are like crop top and they go down a little further so they like they structure they, they have a lot of structure to them and they like pull pull isn't the right word they like help your boobs sit where they're supposed to like you know after surgery so anyway i don't like the jockey ones oh and then shoes i didn't show you i have my golden geese on yeah, me and Mel have resis at 7.30, it's 6.40, so I'm just gonna edit a couple ticky talkies and then I'll go get her. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.